Hey, everybody. So, <clears throat> session 33. Uh, session 33 was streamed, uh, but was not recorded. Yes, uh, so we now are the proud owners of a lost episode, episode 33. Episode 33 was really exciting. There was a lot of cool crime drama tropes. There was a lot of cool combat. There was a rule of cool insta-kill. Uh, there was an amazing random NPC who stole the hearts and minds of our heroes. Ultimately, it brought uh, a long plotline to a close and opened up the opportunity for new adventures and new possibilities within the city of Mitros. Nay, the entire world of Thylea. Whew, man, I would love to recap the entire thing for you, but I still have this point of exhaustion from, you know, saving the city of Mitros with a dope-ass rock concert. So, begrudgingly, I am passing the responsibilities of recapping session 33 to the only person that was willing to do it. Uh, take it away, Telemachus. Ah, my friends! Eh, welcome! I understand that you have missed all of the adventures that happened last week. You might think to yourself, Telemachus, did you miss these adventures as well? You are now best friends with Pythor, god of battle. Are you not too busy fighting and slaying evil alongside him to have time to go and recount the deeds of these great heroes? Nay, I say to you, Telemachus is everywhere he needs to be. And I will tell you what happened in episode 33. I will take you on a journey back in time to a day when a young man was supposed to record his stream and did not. It is okay. We still love this man very much. Now, where did we leave off? Julian. Handsome, brave, blood of the gods, was bamboozled by a powerful crime lord, Maximus. He was taken out to the deepest parts of the bay of Mitros and thrown overboard. His allies did everything they could to try and save him, but in the end, Sidon claimed his life. Well, technically he dropped, but it sounds so much cooler to say that Sidon claimed him. Anyways, uh, because of his strange heritage, he has magic necklace. Uh, it opened up. Grandma was inside. Very, very beautiful grandma. And she bring him back to life, but she mad at him. Fast forward. They make it back to the mainland. They try to keep what's happened to Julian a secret. They have a meeting at cafe, uh, as you can see here. There is a lot of blood. Uh, I don't think there was any fighting in the cafe, but uh, there they had discussion. Oren spent time with his hyena. Uh, he was very quiet for whole session. Uh, so they had this big discussion where they tried to figure out what should we do with this guy, yeah? What should we do with this guy? In the end, they decided they needed more information. So they were going to return to the warehouse to see if they could find the evidence they needed to prove that Maximus was up to no good. Ha! Huh. So, they make plans to go to the warehouse at night. But Maya now has the ability to make them breathe underwater, so they're going to approach from the waterways. Mm. Let us journey over to the warehouse. How am I doing, Kyra? It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's... <clears throat> you're doing great. Just just keep going. Just don't talk to me. As you wish. Now, when they arrive, they swim up to the, uh, the side here. They need to do some reconnaissance. So, Maya turned into spider. It's a classic move. She climb up and look through a window. She see that there's guys inside. Now, we did not reset the map, but, uh, you know, so everyone looks like they're already beat up. But you have to imagine that everyone is still alive and well. So... They climb up, they look in the window, they see that there's some guards. They know there's some guards over here. They know that there is a, a guy over here, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, they come up with a plan to lure the guard dogs over here, along with their masters, using smells. 
and magic. So they use smells and magic and they lure the guard dogs from outside, inside, and from inside over to the window. At that point, Sibo casts Hypnotic Pattern. It fails on everyone. Panicked, he casts it again and catches the entire group. That's the point when they start busting in through back door. Maya turns back to normal, unlocks the door, swings it open. Allies begin rushing in. Crazy fight breaks out. Orin, champion, unable to be struck. Thanks to his training at Telemachus' school of heroism. He is absolutely phenomenal. No attacks can hit him. He is a god of war. No offense, by the way. So he gets in there and he starts whooping the ass. It's good. Meanwhile, over here, uh, Andronikos is in here, and he's wrestling with this dog. And this dog is just giving everything it got to this fight. It's very, very dramatic. Maya, she sees everyone doing cool stuff. She tries to do cool stuff too. She falls off box, cracks head open on railing, nearly kills herself. She should never succeed at cost. But sometimes, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. So, Sibo. What happened to Sibo? He's casting the spell. He's keeping everyone under control, right? What does he does he come rushing in? Does he come in and heroically smash some skulls and capture some guards? No. He spends the entire night swimming around. His six strength score and tiny body too weak to climb out of the bay. It's very sad. At one point, he attracts the attention of this low-calorie commoner. This man comes over and saves his life, pulls him out of the bay. Then he offers to take Sibo to get him some dry clothes and food. Uh, but Sibo acts crazy, runs and jumps back in the water. Now this man's very confused. So he runs to the door and he knocks on it, trying to get some answers. Julian answers the door, dressed as a guard. It explains that Sibo works for them and is very drunk. This man believes it, but maybe not all the way, and he leaves. A meanwhile, inside, they have taken out all of the guards. Some of them have died, like this guy who got a javelin of lightning through his face, but many of them were taken alive. Then they find out that there is an office here, but the door is locked. They also find out you can go downstairs. So they travel downstairs and they find the basement of this warehouse. It is very damp. It is very gross. They get down there though and they see that there are doors in good shape. And there are apples and a barrel of water. So, they use their brains and think this might be where prisoners are kept. What they do is they knock on door and lure out guard. Guard comes out, can't find anyone. Walks past this barrel, and Ranikos hiding in barrel, because he is a fishman. Grabs crew veteran, pulls him into barrel, drowns him. This was pretty impressive, since Cruel uh, Veteran had many, many hit points and great armor class. This would have been a tough mini-boss fight, but rule of cool, one-shot kill. He's done. Then they go inside this very sad-looking place, and they find many, many baby minotaurs. Baby minotaurs have very deep voice. They're born with super deep voice that gets softer as they age. Opposite of people. Look at that cute face. Yes, they save many of these babies. Then they come up, they break into this office finally. They go through, they take all the valuables, like heroes do. And then they go and they find all the evidence they need to connect Maximus with this trading of Minotaur contracts and the imprisonment and kidnapping of Minotaur children. Everything seems like it's going well until... Low calorie commoner returns with a shitload of soldiers. Excuse my language. The soldiers show up and they demand answers. The party is faced with a difficult choice. Do they tell the truth or do they lie? In the end, they chose the truth. And it paid off. The guards were understanding. They took into evidence all of the things they had found. Minus the treasure that they had hidden, eh? like heroes do. They were brought to uh, the courts where they were interrogated, the children were interrogated, and answers were found. At this point, Chandra showed up. This guy right here. 
And Chandris, uh smoothed over all of the things going on with the guards and super, super upset about these children being taken advantage of, uh, said he would do everything he could to make sure Maximus paid for his crimes. So, time began to speed up and they had to make decisions about what to do with Maximus. The party had to vote and unanimously decided that Maximus deserved an execution rather than an exile. And that's what happened in uh, session 33, the last episode of Mythic Odysseys of the Dragon Lords. How, how was that? Um, I mean, it was, it was all right. It was passable. I feel like you, you glossed over a lot of important details, but we're not going to record it twice. So, oh, thank you very much for your help, Telmachus. You just, you know, just got out of here. So yeah, that's what happened in session 33. I apologize on behalf of everyone involved in this glorious and wonderful campaign. Uh, accidents happen sometimes. Uh, hopefully this recap gets you up to speed and with Telemachus' amazing storytelling, ho hopefully you feel like you were there and experienced every moment of magic and might and sword, sword play, uh, uh, no, spear play. I'm really tired. Anyways, that's what happened. Join us in episode 34, which will be an actual video of an actual play session. Thanks. Uh, also, li like and subscribe. I think I'm supposed to say that. Okay. All right. All right. Goodbye, everybody.